Chelsea booked a place in the Champions League as well with that 2-0 victory over Wolves. Of course, the big talking point leading up to kickoff was the fact that Kepa was dropped. Willie starting ahead of him. Uh, this is what Frank had to say about that decision after the game. The idea that we um, haven't kept enough clean sheets is no, definitely not just a reflection of our goalkeeper. That's something that we have to work on as a team. Look at as how we train and maybe how we recruit generally going forward. But um, I don't want to pinpoint it on Kepa today. Kepa decision, as I said before, the game was a choice on on probably recent form, a probably recent situation, a tough time for him. And I felt like Willie coming in with confidence off the back of his performance against Manchester United last week would be kind of what we needed today for the game. Um, so I don't want to jump forward beyond um, the Arsenal game next week. It would be wrong. He's gone, Shaka. But the problem is, how yeah. do you get rid of him? I, I, I don't know. But this is as clear a signal as I've seen from a manager, um, regardless of, of how long he's been in the job, that somebody is still plus the requirements. After you bring Kepa in last week and then now you drop him again for, for Willy Caballero, um, and, and given what Frank has said, there, there's no question in my mind uh, anymore. And I, I know we speculated about this for, for some time, nor should there be any question in, in Kepa's mind that Frank doesn't want him at the club. Mm. The challenge is, how do you get rid of him, given what you paid from him, given what his salary is, and given what you've seen from him over, over, over recent weeks, um, who picks up that tab? I, I'm not sure that anybody does. I, I can only see a home for Kepa back in Spain somewhere. Where that is, I, I'm not absolutely certain. And nobody outside the top two would be willing uh, to pay the kind of money they, that, that Kepa, I'm sure, would, would command. So Chelsea have to dip in their own pockets in getting him partially off, off of their books. That's, that's not an easy sell. Craig, this is something that we've talked about a lot. The whispers were there, weren't they, a long time ago that Frank didn't really rate him. And that has obviously now exploded into the fact that you dropped your keeper, the most expensive keeper in the world, for your most important game of the season. Yeah, he's toast. He's toast. He's gone. Uh, I think even if Chelsea can't get rid of him, Frank Lampard's probably not going to play him. Uh, you know, Willie Caballero is a number two goalkeeper and has been for many a year now. That's the scenario that, that we're in. Uh, that Lampard is choosing a number two backup goalkeeper, as Caballero has been for a while, over the most expensive keeper on the planet in a game that he knew he might have to get something out of. Now, we know Willie Caballero is going to play next week anyway in the cup final because he's played in the cup games, but he wasn't going to give him a game, Frank Lampard, just to get him fresh uh, and, up, and up to speed for the cup final. There was too much at stake. It was a huge call. But I think, again, Lampard has shown that he's not, he's not frightened to make these calls. And it could have backfired on him. It didn't. But Shaq is absolutely right. I think Lampard will be going to Peter Cech and saying, listen, you've got to work this out. We've got to get this guy out. But there's no way in hell that anybody is repaying Chelsea what they paid for him. If they want to do business to get him out, to get somebody else in, they're going to have to take a hit. Let me just pick something up there that I, I'll pick up on something that Craig just said. Willie Caballero is a number two, and that is absolutely right. Now, psychologically, mentally, there's a big difference between being a number one and knowing you're going to play week in, week out, and being a number two, as Willie Caballero is, and knowing that you play two or three games, and then you might be out for six or seven weeks, and then you come in and, and, and do the same. That's where Willie Caballero is right now. He will be good for two or three weeks. He'll be solid, won't make too many mistakes. But if you play him over the longer term, you, you, I think you'll start to see a, a regression in, in, in those performances. And, and that is, is, is a challenge. Willie Caballero is a number two and will be a number two until he decides to, to hang up his gloves. Now, if you're coming in at, at number one, and let's just look around uh, the Premier League, whether it's a Henderson or a Pope or somebody else who you can bring in who's shown that they can do it in this league, they're going to look at that and say, well, I want to get as much money as Kepa. Mm. And, and here's the challenge. Even if you can't offload Kepa, if you keep him on your books, nobody worth their salt of being a number one at a club like Chelsea is going to come in and say, well, I'm happy getting 50% of the money that Kepa's on because I'm, I'm playing at a big club like Chelsea. That's, that's not going to last, even if you get them, get them to do it for, for one season. So now all of a sudden you've got two goalkeepers on huge money one, a, 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 a reliable number two, that, that's a lot to ask financially. Has Lampard handled this correctly, Robbo? 
Yes, because when you look at Kepa, there's three things that a goalkeeper needs. He's got to either be dominant in the in when balls are coming into the box. If he's not dominant in the air, he's got to be a great shot stopper. If he's neither of those two, he's not a very good goalkeeper. But you're also looking for goalkeepers to be good with the ball at their feet. From what I've seen of Kepa over the last year, he hasn't been dominant in the air. He hasn't made up for that by making magnificent saves. And he's not very uh, direct or he doesn't make the right decision when he's got the ball at his feet. So that's why Frank Lambert, in a one-off game, he had to go with what he thought was going to be his best goalkeeper. And as the, the lads have just said, he's made a good decision. He's been brave enough to make that decision, Frank Lampard. He's shown that with the likes of Pulisic. He's shown that with Giroud, leaving him out for long periods before bringing him back. Frank Lampard's done a very good job, and I think he's done a good job with the goalkeeper, and he's on his way. I, I think, Dan, the, nail, the, the, the coffin lid was already down, but I think if there was any doubt about the nails being hammered in, there was a couple of occasions recently since the restart. The first one was at, was at Palace with the, the Zaha goal, which, you know, look from initial, uh, uh, initial sighting, our first view, that looked like a great goal, but when the replay came in, as good a strike as it was, it went in the centre of the goals. Mm. And here we have a goalkeeper that's six foot four. The second one was Liverpool, and it wasn't the Trent Alexander Arnold free kick. It was great. It was the flapping around uh, from crosses that Robbo just touched on there. There was one ball in particular that flashed across his six yard box in the second half against Liverpool. And it was audible that the Chelsea players were shouting, Kepa! Because there was nobody in the ground, it was picked up in the microphones. And so. Clearly, there is a lack of confidence from management and to, to his own his own players in the goalkeeper. And, and if, if, if the coffin lid wasn't already bolted down, then it certainly was after those two occasions. He's gone, and that's going to be an interesting watch to see, see what move and who Chelsea go for as their number one. Um, I may regret bringing this up. Chelsea got 66 points as well, Craig, this season. <laughs> yeah. Well, what did they I get last find... season? 72. Well, I, I, Chelsea got led. Chelsea got their worst points. If you'd listened to the opening monologue, Chelsea got their, their worst points returned since the 15 16 season when they returned with 50 points and finished 10th. But that wasn't wholly surprising, bearing in mind it's only Lampard's second season in management, first season in the Premier League. And we've pointed this out many times. He lost one of the best players in Europe in Eden Hazard. And for the umpteenth time, they had a transfer ban. Well, they, yeah, they had so a ban, actually, but they still brought in Pulisic. Actually, they still brought in a that, player. This transfer that ban, actually, I, that, up to a point, actually, I get it. But everyone's that saying... Actually well, wasn't, he had no, a transfer not, ban. Not, listen, Pulisic came was, in, didn't he? A £60 million actually, listen, pound player. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me, let me tell you something, Clothiers. They had a transfer ban. There was one or two players come in. None of those players were signed by the manager. The manager had no room to manoeuvre in the transfer market. He inherited the squad. He made no changes to the squad because he couldn't. That is the point. Other managers around the league signed players at their will. Chelsea and Frank Lampard did not. But Am he, I making myself crystal clear? He inherited a player who was player about, of the season. You have to say about you, Frank you're Lampard. saying as if he's like some donkey. He brought in Pulisic, who was key to them being in the Champions League. Well, not at the start of the season, he wasn't. But now it has been. He was in and out of the team. You, listen, you're arguing against yourself. Whether you like it or not, Chelsea had a worldwide transfer ban <laughs> and Lampard used the squad this year that he inherited. Please tell me something that I'm saying that is factually incorrect. But he inherited a squad that finished third last season with the exception a squad of Eden and Hazard. And he couldn't make any changes. And they <laughs> lost Eden Hazard to Real Madrid and still finished in the top four. In a draw Please league. tell me that I'm league. factually incorrect. But he finished fourth in a dross league and he didn't lose any defenders, yet... You've gone from, what, 39 goals to 54 goals this season? Yes. They've had problems at the back. He knows that. He's tried everything. Listen, Frank Lampard, like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, still has it all to prove. Right. I'm not, I'm not arguing against that. I'm not saying Lampard is a better manager than Solskjaer. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying he had bigger problems. And both managers have, have got it all to prove that they can peg the gap between the top two. 
the fact is Solskjaer's been there longer and United are a bigger club. That's why I've been saying all along that there's a huge question mark, in my opinion, whether he is the man, even if they rebuild their squad, to peg that 30-point gap. Mm. That is my point. And it's not difficult to understand. Robbo? Well, what you have to say about Frank Lampard as well, what he's done well, he's changed his mind on players. The hardest thing in management is when you've made your mind up, Alonso, he didn't really want him, but eventually he has to change his mind. And if a manager's prepared to do that, it shows he's got courage. He didn't want Giroud anywhere near the team. He wanted Tammy Abraham in the team. But he still obviously man-managed it well enough so that when he needed Giroud, he came in and did well. He's done it with some of the other players as well. He left Jorginho out for several weeks and he's brought him back in and Jorginho did OK, apart from that tackle against Liverpool. But he's had the ability to change his mind on players and that's a very th a difficult thing to do as a manager. So he's, so he's got some understanding of how to man-manage people. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.